Peaches with Livingston and Ted Jellet too. And our host, Fitz and Lando, and he brings it to you. <laughs> Creature Features and all creatures. Livingston, a riddle if I may. Proceed. What did the films Apollo 13, Wayne's World 2, Sunshine Cleaning, Made to Order, Ocean's Eleven, This is the End, and Universal Soldier all have in common? They're all films that I neglected to view because I have no interest in doing so. Well, yes, of course, that as well. But they also all contain the 1970 hit song Spirit in the Sky. Welcome to Creature Features! The lovely lass on the stern side of your screen who is looping within the large plastic ring would be our tantalizing troublemaker Tangella. The skyscrapingly sullen skeptic over here would be my otherwise perceptive steward Livingston. And I, friends at home, am your amiable bon vivant and toastmaster of the 70s, Vincent Van Dahl. Let us chat about tonight's program, shall we? First up, as teased upon at the commencement, we will be joined by the chap who wrote the aforementioned and well-renowned tune, Spirit in the Sky. For with us will be Norman Greenbaum, a rock and roll icon of the 60s, a hit maker in the 70s, and still remains to this day a musical legend here in the 21st century. I'm quite familiar with this song. I remember when it was first released. No doubt. I imagine you also remember when Beethoven's Fifth Symphony was released as well. And to top off all this musical merriment from the 70s, we'll be watching 1974's Scream of the Wolf, a somewhat rather lame but gloriously entertaining attempt at a lycanthrope thriller. Starring Peter Graves, Clint Walker, and Joanne Paflug, this exciting TV movie had frightened many a young viewer during the Ford administration. Flug. What? There was never an American president named Flug. Never mind. It would appear that Livingston might have taken a nip of brandy prior to tonight's show. In any case, don't go away, because it's going to be another night of 1970s delight right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome to the Polter Manor. It is time for Creature Features, and we're going to have fun tonight. You know why? Because we've got Norman Greenbaum, the author and singer of Spirit in the Sky. You know, that's got to be one of the most famous songs ever made in history. It seems so. Uh, it's been... Um just chugging along for years and years. It is in so many films. I did a small list at the commencement where I talked about some of the movies it's been in, but that's like just a tiny portion of all the, the films. Yeah, it's been in about years. 60 so far. That's insane. <laughs> that's a lot. You know, something that you did so long ago still has so yeah. much mileage to give. Well, it took, it, you know, it was interesting. It was a one hit wonder, basically. And there were, you know, like tire years in between. And right. All that, but then it took on a life of its own once they put it in the first movie. Right. And then it seemed to, you know, just fit just into came back to all life. these ones after and, and a whole lot of commercials. Well, you know, I take exception to this one hit wonder 
title because you did many more songs than that. We're going to talk about those. Sure. Some of them are some of my favorites. But uh, how was the trip up? You had to do the drive from what? Penluma from, from, to Bodega from, Bay? From Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. But, you know, it was creepy because those birds were there. and You know, you know they, they I've, just... I've yet to see them. Yeah, the only birds we've got around here are these little tiny canary-looking things that are uh, completely harmless. But uh, you probably saw those terrifying crows, ravens. Yeah, and you know, I, I just automatically started doing this. Well, of course, that's yeah. that's the that's the typical move when yeah. does when attacked by birds. All right, well, we say we start our film, and when we come back, you're going to tell us all about how Spirit in the Sky was brought to life. Sure. All righty, off we go. You guys stay with us. We'll be right back. Have Ernie call me when he checks the body. Will do. All right, come on, let's get it on the set. Find a registration? Yeah. From Los Angeles. Let me see.
Fern? <laughs> come on in. Glad to see you. Hey, you didn't uh, come all the way out here because of that parking ticket I got the other day, did you? <laughs> Have a little coffee. It's fresh. John has been a murder. Who? A man called Hammond, salesman from Los Angeles. Where did it happen? Out on Vasquez Road. He must have made the wrong turn last night and ran out of gas. Yeah? Something attacked him in his car. But something? What do you mean, something? That's it. We don't know what it was. But it practically tore off the roof, broke through the windshield, and mangled his body so badly he didn't even look human. Now, we found some tracks. I'd like you to take a look at them. Sure. Come on. Well, the way you described the killing, it could sound like a leopard. Well, these aren't leopard tracks, are they? No, no. They bear some resemblance to the tracks of a wolf, but it'd have to be enormous. Look how deep that claw mark is. Yeah? No, no, it can't be a wolf, because even allowing for the possibility of size, the pads are different. See, that's not a wolf pad. Listen, I think we ought to get Byron in on this. Why don't you give him a call? Well, Mr. Byron is busy. You asked him? Yeah, I asked him. Go. Hey, what's the matter with him? I don't know. It's just as if the animal changed its scent. How could an animal change its scent? It doesn't make sense, does it? No. There isn't any water around here they could have crossed. Hey, what kind of an animal are we looking for, anyway? First, it nearly rips the roof off that car. Then it breaks through the windshield and tears up that guy like it did. Now its scent disappears. What did it do, fly away? Charlie, go help with the dogs. Sorry. Well, what did it do? Thank you. Hi, Sandy. Coffee, sir? Coffee, sir? Um, no, dinner, Friday night. Sorry, that's out of stock. Oh, you're angry at me. No! I like not hearing from you for weeks at a time. Oh, come on, Sandy. You know I'm working on a book. I haven't been out of the house in three weeks. I didn't know that paralyzed your dialing finger. Oh, um, I should have phoned, and I didn't phone. However. I'm busy Friday night. I have to grind coffee beans. Dinner Friday night. That has got to be more interesting than grinding coffee beans. Just a little bit. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome back to Creature Features. If you're just joining us, I am your host, Vincent, and my guest tonight is Mr. Norman Greenbaum. And if you don't know him by name, you know him by his song, Spirit in the Sky. Famous, famous, famous tune. You know, I wish I had written something half that popular back when I did music. And back then, who knew? I mean, we knew that it sounded pretty good. And uh, 
We were happy to uh, I listened to a demo. A... Now, was this demo done before the final version was done? It was the one uh, just with me and my guitar. Right, right. Yeah, I just did that real quick to, to uh, so uh, the producer would know the song. Right. And then we went and rehearsed with a full it band. It is so and different. Deve and developed the sound and, and the uh, memorable uh, guitar oh, fuzz box. You cannot, you cannot mimic that sound, I don't think. That is just it's impossible. Very... Actually, no, no one has ever been able right. to do it uh, all these years. And, and the reason why is that I, I had uh, one of the players in, in one of the, the original bands um, was, a, was a, an electronics whiz. Right. And he had invented this little fuzz box. It was only about this big. And, and Back he, in the 70s. Yeah, it was That's no. Amazing. It was actually in the '60s. In the '60s, and and he dug a hole into the in, in the um, uh, Fender Telecaster, right. and he stuck this little thing in there with a nine volt battery and put it in a switch. That's incredible. And he says, "Try this out." That's, and I go, you know, oh my I, I would God, imagine this is great. It'd be a, a device in the '60s with like tubes and like large transistors, and it was a tiny thing. A little tiny thing, wow. and uh, well, m m most guitar players uh, who write to me think that I slit the speakers. No, because Thank it's you. too clear. You know, uh, broken speakers sound, it's a different sound, it's not yeah. a good sound. Well, you know, I was, I was watching YouTube and I was looking at all these people who tried to cover the song, yeah. and not one of them got the guitar sound correct. I mean, they came close, but not perfect. That's We're incredible. still working on, right. on trying to replicate it ourselves. You just got to get a copy of that circuit, like the. Well, the, he had disappeared, is, unfortunately. I know he's like and, disappeared, and like Bermuda Triangle disappeared. Yeah. Or, oh, absolutely. Yeah, with the uh, the know-how. <laughs> he could have he could have gotten a very famous patent for that particular uh, process. Uh, absolutely, mm. and so uh, unfortunately he did disappear. But we're working on it with a couple of people, and uh, hopefully we're going to be able to find. They don't make those parts anymore since everything went digital. So, uh, but there are some around. But you got to, you know, right. look around to see who's got well, old stuff like that. Right, There's a little bit you, here and you'd there. You think with synthesizers and computers and all that stuff, they'd be able to figure it out, but they haven't yet. So can't, can't do, do it. it. It's an analog sound. We're in a digital world. Trying to get analog sound. There, there's a difference. I think that's why a lot of people are uh, liking vinyl again. Right. Because it's a fatter, it, nicer sound. It is. Right, right. It's I totally more agree. More natural. All right. We got to get back to the film, but when we come back, we're going to talk about some of your other music and uh, a bunch of other fun stuff. So okay. you stay with us. You guys stay with us. And I'm stuck here for the night. So you're stuck with me as well. See you soon.
changed. What do you mean they've changed? The animal ran to that point, and then it started walking. But when it walked, it walked on two legs. They're gone. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that thing flew away again? I'll take your choice. Would you rather believe it erased its own tracks? Vernon, any way you look at it, the tracks go from four feet to two feet to nothing, period. I'm sorry, Vern. I haven't been much help, and I know it. You did the best you could. Nobody could have followed those tracks any better than you. I don't know. I think maybe this afternoon I'm going to take a drive out to Byron's and see if he has any suggestions. Good luck. Ah, he's not that bad. You just have to know him. Uh-huh. Well, if he tells you anything, let me know. I will. Thanks for the lift. John, you're absolutely certain you don't know what kind of an animal it was. No, but there is something else. What? Look, when the animal was walking, its tracks were deeper than they should have been. I don't follow you. Now, uh, look, when it was running on all fours, it left the track of an animal weighing 100 pounds or so. So what? When it walked upright on two legs, it weighed more than I do. I thought you might be around. <laughs> I should have known I can't sneak up on you. John, how are you? <laughs> Fine, Byron. So, Bellas persuaded you to join the hunt, then? Well, how'd you know? Why else would you be here? Besides, I saw your name in the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, in on it. Good. At least you haven't entirely lost your urge to action, then. John, it's good to see you. Come on inside. Been a long time, Byron. What have you been doing with yourself? Well, I'm getting ready for my trip to South America. I thought you were going to Africa. South America is better, less familiar, more demanding. I plan to cross the Mato Grosso country there. Mato Grosso? A lot of people have disappeared in there. Yes, I know. How's the hunting business? Lucrative. How's the uh, story writing business? Still living. Is it? How about a scotch? Sure. Hello, Grant. How are you? Very well, thank you, Mr. Weatherby. It's been a long time. It's good to see you again, sir. You're looking quite well. Thank you. Good to see you. So, tell me about this killer animal. You've seen its tracks? Yeah. And? I don't know. Thanks. You couldn't identify him? Well, the tracks look something like a wolf, but I don't think it's a wolf. What do you think it is? Huh. You tell me. It changed its scent, Byron, so the dogs couldn't follow it. It ran on four legs, walked upright on two, and then erased its own tracks. But that's fantastic. Then help me find it. I can't. I've got too much to do to get ready for my trip. 
You can't find time for something like this. That's hard to believe. I'm busy, John. So, what else? Have there been any further signs of this animal since the killing? Make that plural. It got its second victim last night. Where? About a mile from the first killing. Same method of kill? The same method of mangle would be a better description. Well, both killings occurred within a mile of each other. That narrows down the field. Undoubtedly, the animal's got a cave within that area. That limitation should help you to find it before it kills a third time. A third time? You know that once an animal starts killing humans, it never stops. door's locked, isn't it? Yeah, it's locked. Let me go check, make sure, though. I'm coming with you. Who's out there? Better not have any funny ideas. I got a gun in here! I know someone is out there. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to the show. You know, Norman stepped out to his limousine to get some more items for show and tell. He's got things to, to actually show us. You know, typically when we have a musician on the show, they don't bring anything. It's like, oh, listen to my music. But no, he's, he's actually brought some visuals. It's wonderful. Anyways, we're going to take this moment to do letters, and uh, Tangela's going to blow bubbles, right? I don't know what it is with her and bubbles. She's dangerous, and she blows bubbles. Ruining my furniture. Oh, well, it's already ruined. What do you got for me, sir? Indeed. And how are you? I'm quite well, thank you. Did you recover from that looping we received? That hula hoop. The hula hooping looping. She's quite clever with those things. All right. This one is from Douglas C. in Oakland, California. And he goes, Dear Creature Features, love your show, especially your guests. I grew up watching Creature Features when Bob Wilkins was hosting. I was in Montclair Presbyterian Church Youth Group with Rob and Nancy Wilkins. We know Rob. We do. We haven't met Nancy yet. Uh, you know, we had Rob on the show a few, like, Almost a year, right? Something like that. When did Rob come? A year ago? A year and a half or so. A year and a half, right. Uh, whom I consider are good friends, and thank you for treating them with respect on your show. You know, we got to get Nancy on the show. Then we'll have the full set. We would have had Sally and Rob, and we just have to get Nancy on. All right, please keep showing locally produced movies like Modesto, Monster, and Bikini Planet. Maybe in the future you can show Bikini Planet 2 in 3DD. You see how he did that? He put double D. Yeah, right. amazing. Keep up the good work, Douglas C. Well, thanks for writing, Douglas. That's wonderful. You know, we just recently showed that one uh, 
Space Trucker Bruce. That was Nindy, but it was, I think it was filmed in Alaska. Not here, but close enough, right? Give me some mail, sir. Ooh. Colinga. Postage. Timothy James in Colinga. Wow, that's interesting. Never heard of it. I used to drove, no, I used to see the sign when I drove back and forth to LA. It would say Colinga. And I always wondered what kind of linga it would be in Colinga. Oh, my goodness. All right. Here we go. Oh, so it was handwritten, but look, somebody Transcribe. typed it up for me so I could read it. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Dear VLNT. That's us. Those were our initials. Ah. Right. Greetings from sunny Colinga, California. Me and my friends love your show. My girlfriend sends an extra special hello to Mr. Livingston. Thank you for bringing back Funky Horror and Drive Through Fair on your show. Also, thank you for playing Curse of the Swamp Creature. You know, we got lots of compliments on that one. I don't know why. I didn't think it was that good of a film. But if you think it's good, then I think it's good. A few movie requests. Zombie Apocalypse, Savage Weekend, Death Machines. Well, you know, Timothy, these don't sound very romantic. So if you and your girlfriend watch these films, I, well, you know, to each his own, right? Indeed. All right. Although you've played it twice, please show guacamole, guacamole handshake again. That's Guatemalan handshake, but I like guacamole handshake. That's a good way to put it. It's a new favorite of mine. Good. You know, I keep telling him people will like that film if they just watch it once or five times like I have. And always please send my love to Livingston and Tangela and your crew, of course, yourself. Timothy James. Thanks for writing, Timothy. I hope everything's nice in Colinga. I have to visit that place one day. You know, after driving by the sign so much, you know, I, I used to drive by uh, to, on the way to Vegas, Zizix Road. And finally, I had to say, I have to go see what Zizix Road is. But don't make that face. Anybody in L.A. knows what Zizix Road is. And what was it? It was just a road. But it was nice. All right. This one's got photos. I like this. All right. It's a picture of a TV guide. And he goes, hello, Livingston and the beautiful Miss Tangella and Vincent. I was browsing in a used vinyl record store last week when I found an old TV guide from 1975. I thumbed through the pages and found an advert for Creature Features with guests Leonard Nimoy and host Bob Wilkins in it. Score. I wanted to share it with you, so I've added a few images to this email. So he actually added some images. We're going to see if we can get you the actual ones on these, because guess what, Glenn? We've got this. And it's got every single TV Guide ad that Bob Wilkins ever did. It's actually rather amazing. And you know, our director produces these. He does. Tom Wersh, our director, who's smiling from behind the camera over there, he makes these, and he tells me you can purchase one of these from... Amazon.com. And what's it called? Bob Wilkins and TV Guide? That's it? Guide. Just Bob Wilkins and TV Guide. So look for it. Oh, look, it even says compiled by Tom Wersh. See? All right, is that it for letters? We have one more. One more letter. And it's a short one. I like the short ones. This one's from Augie Baxter in Carmel, Indiana. And he goes, Dear Creature Features, why aren't you more like Sven Gulli? Why aren't we more like Svenguli? Why indeed? Eh, I don't know why. All right. Why aren't you more like Svenguli? He has a rubber chicken. I suppose that would be nice. I could use that. And a top hat. Why don't you wear a top hat? You're stupid. Augie Baxter, Carmel, Indiana. You know, I've worn top hats at like fancy dress parties. That's it. Now, I don't like them. They make my, my head's very large. And if I add that much more to my head, I look like Frankenstein. Plus, every other horror host wears a top hat. I think I should, you should wear the top hat. Oh, please. Yeah, maybe. All right. In any case, if you'd like to send this mail yourself, send it to the email address you see appearing down here. If you'd like to send something in the post, send it to the address you see down here. We'll be right back with Norman. But first, we're going to get back to the film. You guys stay with us. Got it.
Yeah, not now. Not now. No one has any idea where this animal comes from. Sandy, nobody has any idea where this animal is, much less where it comes from. You know, in 20 years of hunting, I have never run across a predator even remotely like this one. And it's driving me nuts that I can't run it down. Then why doesn't your friend Byron help you? I don't know. I don't know how he can resist the challenge. You know, I'm going to go to my grave not understanding how the two of you could be so close for so many years. You have to understand him. He's a... Speak of the devil. Hmm. Here he comes. Byron. Good evening. Came into town to get some supplies. Doors are closed, so I'd drop in for a drink. Don't worry, I'm not gonna join you. Oh, sit down. No, come on, sit down. Was I right? About what? The animal killing again. Yeah, yes, you were. Fascinating creature, or whatever it is. You find it fascinating that four human beings have been slaughtered? Some people are saying it was a werewolf. Did you know that? <laughs> yes, yes, I heard that. <laughs> I don't scoff. Remember that wolf we went after in Canada? How the Indians said that it wasn't a wolf at all, but a trapper turned into a wolf? Mm-hmm. Now, there was an animal. There was a man killer. You never could accept that the life of a predator is superior to that of its victim, could you? What? I said he could never appreciate I, I heard what you said. It's believing you that I'm having trouble with. That's a lovely dress you wear. Well, Byron and I never really thought too much alike. We almost did once. But you preferred to wait in the trees. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the allure that mortal danger holds for you always left me a little bit cool. But only in mortal danger are we alive, John. Only by risking our lives can we truly appreciate them. What kind of a life are you leading now? What kind of life is anyone around here leading now? Emasculated by society and safety? Well, uh, we're enjoying it. <laughs> I give life as well as take it. The animals I kill are never more alive than in that instant before my bullet strikes them. Come on. And I'm never more alive than in that instant when they could kill me just as easily. I couldn't help overhearing you, sir. You're a hunter, aren't you? Why do you want to know? Perhaps you could tell me what the pleasure is that full-grown and presumably intelligent men get from murdering defenseless animals. Hey, look, I think you better just... Uh... I didn't mean to intrude, of course, but tell me. Is it a sense of power? A sense of accomplishment? Or is it a regression to the past when killing animals was a way of life? Sir? I couldn't tell you that. I thought not. I thought not, sir. I could show you, though. I beg your pardon? The pleasure I get from killing. I could show you what that is. Though I doubt you'd die with the nobility of an animal. Shall I show you? Shall I? Byron. <laughs> You're pretty good. You almost had me convinced. Would have been so easy.
You know that wolf he was talking about, the, the one in Canada? What about it? Well, in order to kill it, he waited for it all night on the ground beside some bait. A killer wolf, a real terror. I waited up in a tree. <laughs> That's where anyone in his right mind would wait. Well, not according to Byron. See, the wolf had to have the same chance to live that he did. Him with a rifle? With one bullet in it. Oh, am I supposed to admire that? Well, not admire it, maybe, but respect it got badly bitten by that wolf. They were so close together, I couldn't get in a shot. Byron finished it off with a hunting knife. He came very close to dying. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. We are still chatting with Mr. Norman Greenbaum, who wrote Spirit in the Sky. You know, I was going to ask you, did you have like a, a name for the band when you released that song? Well, at that time, uh, I was just a solo artist, right. so we just went by my name. Right. But I had a, a band. Prior. Well, prior, when I first started uh, in Los Angeles, the, fir the first band I had was was a band that was called Dr. West's Medicine Show. Right. And junk band. And uh, our the first song that we recorded was called The Eggplant That Ate Chicago. And that was a very famous tune. It actually did well for right. being as goofy as it was. Uh, we were a pretty goofy band. Uh, we painted our faces. We had a light show. Uh, it was the early years of, of things like that. And this would be what year? 65 and uh we did we did the eggplant at H chicago and it was the first uh, original jug band song like it was original rather than just a remake of the old right. jug band songs 
that people had, had recorded. Uh, and this was that, some fun made the music. Charts, yeah. It was some very fun music. It was not like typical like sad songs or anything like that. It was uh, it, it an wasn't. eggplant eating Chicago. Back to Spirit in the Sky, <laughs> even though it had a renaissance with all these films, it actually was had a good position on the charts long before that when you released it, right? Well, yeah. Uh, it was released in uh, early 1970. Right. And it was getting a quite a bit of airplay on AM radio, which was basically what was happening then, still, still then. Uh, but um, it was starting to wane, but nobody knew yet. So they had uh, promotion men that would, they would call every week the station to see what was going on. Right. Because they had their, their t the next week's top 20 would come out on Friday for, for people in, in, in the biz. And so one of the promotion men from Warner Brothers called up the station and said, well, uh, how are you guys doing with the song? Uh, is it still on the list? And they said, well, no, you know, we've decided we're, we're, it's just, you know, not doing that well this past week, so we're going to drop it. He says, don't you dare, because I just got an order for 20,000 singles. Oh, my goodness. And he said, wow. And that was it. In two weeks, it was number one. It was it was just crazy. This one promotion person said, "You cannot." And that did it. You cannot do that. And uh, that did then, it. Then it then it took off, and it, and it sold two million uh, singles, which was a lot back then. Especially for a solo artist. Yes, and 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 a song that really didn't uh, fit in what was happening right. at that right. time with other artists. Because if you go back and, and you look, it would it did not fit in. No. Plus, it was too long. Right. And and originally the the record company said, C can you cut some of it out because it's like four minutes long. Right. right. Oh. But Good for is, you. But did you know back yeah. then it was like two they don't know. two twenty? That was that was Which, that was your that was your AM hit. I don't know anything. So, but uh, it's a good all, thing you didn't listen to them. Yeah. All right. We need to get back to the film, but when we come back, we're going to talk about some of these other songs you did, and uh, pretty soon we're going to talk about what you're doing next. So uh, we'll be right back. You guys stay here. Don't change that dial.
came as soon as you called, Mr. Weatherby. She's in the bedroom. She was very lucky. We must have scared it away before it got through the door. She never saw it. where they go. Wasting our time trying to follow that animal, Vern. We're gonna have to attract it. You set traps. No, I'm not talking about traps. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sandy. I want you to get some things together. You're gonna stay at my place for a while. Okay? if I'm wrong, John, but I got a feeling you're going out looking for this animal yourself. What else is left to do? I'm putting on a curfew. No one in the hills after dark. I expect you to abide by it like everyone else. I'll see you, Vern. Evening, John. I guess you forgot about the curfew.
Well, I was worried about you. What did you want me to do? Well, I didn't want you to call the sheriff. I'm very capable of taking care of myself, Sandy. And I'm sorry. I didn't realize my caring about you would be so upsetting. All right, I'm tired. I'm going home to get some sleep. I'll see you later. John? Hmm? You're not going to like this. Well, don't tell me. I think it's Byron. What's Byron? I think he's behind the killings. Well, why was I attacked right after we saw him in the restaurant? Well, you told me he was badly bitten by a wolf in Canada, and you also said... Oh, you're not said... going to start that werewolf business, are you? Well, I don't know what I'm starting on or what I believe, but he said that the wolf had... Hi. Am I interrupting anything? No, no, no. Now, I'm going to get some sleep. Do not go back to your house. Goodbye, Sandy. What's that all about? Uh, nothing. Didn't sound like nothing. What was that about a werewolf? She said that she tells you everything. She's decided that Byron's a werewolf. How about that? You're not laughing, Vernon. John, I wonder if you'd ride out to Byron's with me this afternoon. What for? Just to talk to him. I'll pick you up about 2 o'clock, all right? Whatever you say, Vern. Ah, uh, yes, my name is Maria Davis. And I wonder, do you have this old movie that came from outer space? Please let me know if you have that movie in. I would appreciate it. Thank you. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. You know, I just love the smell of albums. You don't get this anymore. You don't get this from no. a CD case. It's it's just got no, it's no, got a was... smell like you know everyone who's handled it every time it's been someplace. It's real. We need to bring these back. Absolutely. This would be wonderful. Uh, we I like to go to uh, you know use stores that have oh, used so things and, you know, and find find I, old albums. I put them on this thing and I destroy them. I need to buy an actual record player, not one of these old phonographs but this is wonderful all right so this is album number three, three. And this is called petaluma which is a city close to us close it to is you. yes and this is this is a place you landed after living where los angeles los angeles you went from los angeles to petaluma this is an amazing album because this has got all these stories and photos i cannot show them all but you've got a goat you know tangela we has goats and she loves them so great minds think alike but there's like actual cartoons, comic. That's yeah. probably what I should say. It's the, comic. The, we, we found a really great artist in San Francisco. This is and incredible uh, stuff. His, he just did a great job. Oh, this is, this is wonderful stuff. And so this album, how did this one do? It didn't do well because uh, it didn't fit in. I, I think everything I've done never quite fit in. But, that but, comes but it, it was original. And it pays that back in dividends later, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. No, that's, you're just ahead of your time is, is I guess, what the problem I guess. is. Right. No, this is, this is fantastic. And we've got one from your prior band, right? 
That was the, the, the first recording we ever did. Was Dr. Called Dr. West, Dr. West Medicine Medicine Show, Show and Junk Band. Junk band. What exactly is a junk band? Well, uh, and he did not have a drum kit. Oh, so he you had, like hitting? He hit things. Garbage cans and yeah, pails and, uh, and things a, like that. You know, oh, that's a, a Buick bumper. <laughs> Dr. West Medicine Show and Junk Band. Were you Dr. Good, West? I was Dr. West. That's wonderful. And it, would you do like a persona when you were up on the stage? We with, did skits to, and, and we had props. Oh, and we had, so I had, not, we didn't have them for sale, but we, we just did skits about the different Dr. West medicines. And uh, it was actually quite fun. And we painted our faces and had a light show. And uh, when we did shows uh, in between sets, we'd offer to uh, paint faces of people in the audience so oh, how they nice. feel, feel so it's more than it. just uh sit and watch me play my guitar right it's an actual show yeah right right now that makes more sense the eggplant that ate chicago so this one was a hit as well it was right? yes and this 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 you know i was listening to this the other day it's a it's a humorous song you have to like go on google or was it youtube Right, and they it's can a, find the yeah, song. It's on, it's on the YouTube. The Eggplant That yeah. Ate Chicago. It's it's almost like a horror film story. Absolutely, yes, and you better watch out because right. he, he might eat your city. You know, you should soon. You should get somebody to write a script and make it a film, yeah. and this could be the theme. That would song. be wonderful. Right. right. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of films, we're going to get back to Oz. But when we come back, we're going to talk some more with Mr. Norman Greenbaum. And what do you think of music today? We'll find out soon. Stay with us. Interesting. That's all you've got to say? What would you like for me to say? Well, how about you be glad to help us? It's not my concern. I don't get you. Four of your neighbors have been violently killed in the last 10 days, and that is not your concern? Oh, you're angry. That's good. I like to see a man in anger. It's a living emotion. Living emotion? What the hell are you talking about? Are you going to help us or not? Not. Thank you very much, Mr. Byron. That's all I wanted to know. I'll be seeing you. Doesn't any of this bother you at all? No, I'm enjoying it. Enjoying? Yes, enjoying it. I'm enjoying seeing people feel anger, fear, agitation. It means they're alive, John. Maybe for the first time in years. John. Just in case you're thinking about going after that animal yourself, a good hunter is never sure of anything except that his prey will do the unexpected. That is some friend you've got there. No, he's not my friend. I wonder if he ever was. Who's the guy that works for him? Grant. What about him? The whole time we were there, he was watching us. Yeah, he's a little odd. But then so is his master. You know how Byron hired him? Uh -huh. They met in a bar one night. They got to drinking. The Byron pulled one of his old stunts. He was going to arm wrestle him for the drinks. Always had a big thing about arm wrestling. Well, it took him 10 minutes to put Grant down. And that impressed him so much, he hired him. Well, your weird friend doesn't know it. But I'm going to keep a close eye on him from now on. Hey, what's the matter? Charlie, are you crazy sneaking up on me? <laughs> Getting a little edgy in your old age, huh? That is not funny. Anything happening? 
no, nothing. Look, keep an eye on the place. I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Any further questions? Yes. Why don't you answer the first question? Somebody's got to know what's killing these people. Gentlemen, you've been told what it is. An animal of some sort. An animal outmaneuvering your entire department? 
How big a fool do you think we are out here? I just received a wire from Sacramento. The governor has declared this area in a state of emergency. The National Guard will be brought in. Armed with silver bullets? Now, some of you may think this situation is very funny, but we don't. There have been five brutal slayings, including one of our own men. We don't find that very humorous. Now, the National Guard will commence operations within three days. End of report. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. stirred up. It sure is. Well, I'm glad the governor called the guard in. Yeah? What's the matter? Don't you think there'd be any help? No, I don't. That's good news, John. Yeah. Well, I'll see you later. Goodbye, Sandy. Goodbye, Vern. Quite a turnout. What are you doing here, Byron? Since 7 o'clock this morning, I've been answering your Sheriff Bell's questions. I'm going to tell you something. Before this is over, you're going to be answering a lot more. You know where I live, Sheriff. But next time, I suggest you bring a warrant. Hey, John, I've got to go back inside. Will you wait for me? Sure. Look at those faces. Oh, yeah, don't tell me they're alive. Alive with fear. Alert to the possibility of death hanging over their heads. And you think that's just marvelous? It is marvelous, John. When is a man more alive than on his way to the gallows? What cigarette tastes as good as that last one while the firing squad is waiting? You know, in a way, these killings may be of benefit to everybody. Well, good to see you again, John, Sandy. It's him? I know it's him. So I almost wish it were. Can't you admit that it's even possible? What, that Byron's a werewolf? I never said that. I said... Well, what did you say? What do you want from me? A little common sense. If Byron isn't involved, and he's such a good friend, why does he keep refusing to help you? I guess there's only one way that I'm going to satisfy you. Oh, Mr. Wellaby, how are you, sir? Come in. Twice in one day? To what do I owe the pleasure? It's time for you to help me find the animal, Byron. You can't tell me it's not your concern anymore. The 
Excuse me, sir. John, can't you understand why I haven't involved myself? No, I can't. Well, I guess I'll have to tell you. Because I hate to see you so much less a man than you were. Because I was hoping that letting you work on the problem unaided might help you to regain some portion of your once consummate skill as a hunter. That is why you haven't helped. You sound surprised. Byron, people are being killed. The deputy sheriff has been killed. Now, what the devil difference does it make if I regain my hunting skills or not? The whole area is in panic, and you're talking to me about hunting skills? You're too involved, John. That's why you can't locate the animal. All you're concerned about is finding it before it kills again. How foolish of me. How very unhunter-like. Now, are you going to help me find it? What would you do, John, if you found out it really was a werewolf you were after? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Wouldn't it explain the tracks? Think about it. A wolf-like creature running on all fours undergoes a transformation. Now it's a heavier, two-legged creature, but it hasn't changed completely yet, so the tracks are still unfamiliar. Finally, the two-legged creature turns into a man who, in order to protect himself, obliterates his footprints. Does that make sense? Makes a wonderful story, Byron. Yes, doesn't it? Let's get at it. Shall we separate now? Mm -hmm. I'll make a sweep through those hills. That side of the creek meets further down where it runs into the road. All right, I'll take this side. Good luck, John. Don't forget what I told you. A good hunter's never sure of anything except that... Yeah, I know, except that his prey will do the unexpected. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. It is a musical night because we've got Norman Greenbaum with us. He wrote Spirit in the Sky. You know that song. I'm not going to sing it because you know it already. <laughs> but, uh, you know, speaking of music, I've been wondering your opinion of modern music today. What do you think? I don't like it as much as I like music in the past years. Right. 
I, so I where do you it. think it was went from good to bad? Oh, goodness. Uh, last 10 years or so. Oh, really? Maybe. So you, you would like something from like 2001 would be fine. Well, I, I, I think I turned more towards country music when, right. when rap came in. Well, you have I a like, folk background. I do, right. yeah. Right, so that and, makes sense. And it, it seemed that the bands that uh, country singers put together uh, were closer to rock and roll bands. You know, I, was, my I was tuning the radio in my vehicle the other day, and I thought I came across a rock station, and I'm listening to this music, and all of a sudden he starts singing, and I'm here, this is country music. It was incredible, because it was like metal. It yeah. sounded like heavy metal, and all of a sudden this guy starts singing like, you know, country style. I liked it. It was nice. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's my favorite right now. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. So what about things like classical music? You ever listen to classical? No. No. Right. That's all right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's too busy. I can't like everything. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I find some people find it too busy. I, I have the problem with jazz. Jazz is just, it's too much. It's like, it demands my attention. And classical music, I could just kind of put in the background and... Jazz makes me listen to it, so I have the same problem. Well, you gotta. So, are gotta you doing any recording it. now? Are you done with music? Uh, well, no, actually, we have a new band, uh, and we are in rehearsal. Oh, nice! And we're going to be playing uh, some local uh, shows. Fabulous! In the summer. Do you have a title for this band? It's Norman Greenbaum and the oh. Tie Dye Saints. Nice. Uh, featuring Benita Kay. Oh, wonderful. What yeah. does Vanita play? She will be the other singer. Oh, you need another singer because you're going to have to do Spirit in the Sky every single night, right? Well, she's going to be doing the backgrounds from, right. from my songs and also a few of her on, on her own. And uh, hopefully there's some gospel skills going on with that because you need gospel singers for Spirit in the Sky, right? Yeah, that sure made the record. It, right. It did. Um, yeah, that was wonderful. Yeah. And those those ladies who did that were out of uh, Oakland. California, Oakland, right? uh, very nice ladies and uh, enjoyable. It was enjoyable recording. I bet it was uh, fun. They, they added so much. They had great voices. So we, we, we were lucky finding them. I mean, when... Uh, ba bands get lucky. They just find the right people to right. Uh, make it all sure, happen. Possibly. And you know, gospel singers, you know, they at least practice once a week. You they know? sure Some do. singers, I, every singer I've worked with, it's like, oh, I haven't practiced. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm just going to play tonight. And of course, it's always something wrong with their voice. Right. Well, they're uh, up uh, right up in the morning on Sunday. Right. <laughs> Going right at it. Right, ready to go. <laughs> regular band members going, huh? All right, well, we're going to wrap up this film, and then when we come back, uh, you're going to tell us how people can order some cool stuff, cool Norman Greenbaum stuff, and hopefully get some recordings of your new band as well. Okay. All right, so you guys stay with us. We'll be back very soon. Well, not that soon, but soon enough.
Grant? Grant, listen to me. I know. I found Byron's body. Did you really? Put the rifle down, John. On the table. Now! Back up, John. Against the wall. Thank you, John. That was Grant's body in your clothes, wasn't it? He threatened to tell the police about me. And it did provide for a stunning moment, didn't it? Aren't you at all curious as to how I did it? All right. How did you do it? To the basement stairs, John. Racing the tracks was nothing, of course. The change in send obvious. There were two of us. The switch is on your left, John. And uh, watch the stairs, they're rather steep. The two-legged tracks I made myself. A simple matter of borrowing claws and footpaths from some of my trophies and fastening them to the bottoms of a pair of my boots. Most perplexing to you, naturally. You were correct about the four-legged tracks, though. What you didn't realize was that I'd burned and scarred them to make it more difficult. In that. Hairstyling for the show was provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Rusty clawed some reason for existence. To fill their empty minds with so much terror that even they come alive. And to bring my old friend back to me again. Maybe he's not the man he used to be, but we can work on that. Revitalize old muscles, bring back old instincts. Byron, don't you realize you have murdered six human beings? I could have made it seven, John. But I didn't want to kill your lady friend. I just wanted to arouse you. And now? You remember where you found that deputy's body? The clearing nearby? Yes. <laughs> Won't do you any good, John. It's empty. There's a shell box lying on top of a log in that clearing with two shells in it. I put them there earlier this evening. 
One for him. And one for me. We're going to give you a five-minute head start. Plus, you'd rather go to the Mato Grosso with me. It'd be just like old times, John, you and I. Think about it. Choice is yours. Byron, there aren't any choices. We're not going to the Mato Grosso. And I certainly am not going to give you the satisfaction of pretending you're still a hunter. No more games, Byron. Still think I'm playing games, John? Pick up the rifle. You've got five minutes. John. Why didn't you use that before? I doubt that even you would have stalked me if you'd seen a pistol in my hand. You wanted me to stalk you. Let's just say I didn't want you to leave. But I am leaving, John. You won your life. Cheaply and dishonorably, of course. But then every man places his own personal value on his existence. Stay where you are, Byron. You're breaking the rules, John. Have I? Or did you just forget the most important rule of all? Remember, the prey will always do the unexpected. Byron. You civilized, John. 
You mean? You wouldn't shoot a man in the back? I can't let you go, Byron. Byron. And that wraps up the film for this week, but we'll have another one next week. And uh, Tangela insisted on joining us. You know, she's one of your biggest fans. I did not know that. She's always playing your song over and over and over, over and over. over. Again. Yeah. No, you know, she got an eight-track machine just so that it would loop without needing to push <laughs> rewind. That's absolutely That's great. She, does. Yeah. No, no, she, likes, she likes older things. She likes older TV shows and older music. I never listened to her listening to anything modern. I don't know what it is. I think she's reincarnated. I bet. That's what it is. So uh, your website. You have a website, right? I do. I have a website. And it, of course, it's spiritinthesky.com. Oh, you own spiritinthesky.com. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was smart enough to get you jumped to, on to that it one. before someone else beat Good me to move. it. Good yeah. move. So, I, you know, I, I visited it. It looks like you've got all kinds of history. You've got, you know, the album listings. You've got even some stuff people could buy. And uh, the yeah, whole there's story. Yeah, there's a store there. Right. And we have uh, all the reissues of the CDs. That's wonderful. And, uh, all kinds of links and things. Well, we did, we did have the reissue on vinyl, but it sold out. Every, of every it did. year there's vinyl day. Uh, there's a day that's called Vinyl Day, right? And uh, record l labels will print up um, f f maybe fifteen hundred copies of something they that's like, all. like yeah, of each one they'd like to yours. bring back. Right. And so there were fifteen hundred. Uh, it was three, three, four year, three years ago. Right. And uh, they went rather fast. That's <laughs> fabulous. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to keep my eye open for that because I'm going to buy a real record player not one of these silly thing wind up things that's one of the reasons why she got the 8 track is because she's growing weary of winding that thing up all the time well I, I love record players oh not those though it's the I used to have one like that really yeah, yeah it's always, crank it up right but they never keep a consistent speed all right Norman well it's been an absolute joy having you on with us thank you so much for coming well thank you for inviting me I've the, certainly enjoyed myself the pleasure was entirely ours we hope we can have you back again maybe we'll bring your band back on and have you guys before well wouldn't that be great it would be fun yeah. maybe I could like do some accompaniment on the organ who knows all right so uh, as far as you guys go we shall see you next week different guests different movie I have no idea who and I have no idea what but It'll be fun. Tangela will be here. Livingston will be here. And of course, I'll be sitting in this chair making faces again. Have a wonderful rest of the week and spend some time with the ones you love. See you next time. So, uh, Norman, you know, back to this band thing, you know, you might need an extra guitarist and I might be available. Have you ever heard of pay to play?